call us to order. I'm happy to call us to order now that we're recording. Um, and then I will ask um, Stephanie, can we do a roll call, please? Of course. Good morning. Uh, Ava Bermuda Zimmerman. Sorry. Uh, Adrian Cochran. Uh, she is not joining us yet. Uh, Molly Weston Williamson. Present. Sheila Hummel. Present. Uh, Justin Zartman will not be joining us today, and Sal has not yet joined us, uh, but we do have a quorum. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, I want to pause to acknowledge any members of the public uh, who are joining us this morning, and thank you for coming here. Uh, and with that, we can move on to our first uh, item of business, which is reviewing and approving the minutes from the September meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. All Is second. Great. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? I believe the ayes have it uh, and the minutes are approved. And with that, I will turn it over to Jessica to kick off our updates. Thank you, Molly. Um, okay, let me share. Screen. Okay. All right. So, um, the first thing that I'm very excited to share with you is that we recently recorded a few testimonials with um, the Connecticut workers who have used the Connecticut Paid Leave Program. Um, they are, um, I'm going to share with you one of them. And this is currently running on our social media campaigns. The audio is running for um, some of our radio commercials. And we are planning to extend it to a wider digital campaign, a television campaign, and um, we're venturing into the world of TikTok. So it will also uh, be playing there. So let me, I tested this beforehand. Hopefully it works properly, but let's give it a go. We found out pretty early on that we were having twins. I knew I would get time off from work, but it was how I was going to manage two babies by myself when my husband went back to work. Our experience with Connecticut Pay Leave was great. There's a stigma for males working. They keep doing their job while the mother stays home and, and you know takes care of the babies. And over time, I feel like that stigma is going away. And to have that opportunity to help change that stigma to participating and being an active parent was really important. And I was very grateful to have that opportunity because I wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise. So that is our first testimonial. Um, I hope the audio played, it did, right? Okay, good, good, good. So that's our first testimonial. We also have another one um, that's in production with a woman who used caregiver leave when her husband had surgery. Um, and we're working on identifying a few other folks to record these. So, um, you know, we're using this as a way to just sort of um, continue to humanize the program and show the real faces of, of folks who have benefited from it. Uh, and so we're very pleased with how, how that came out and are excited to get it out there to the wider audience. We have been out and about in full force lately. So these are just some of the events that we've been at recently or will be at um, in the next few weeks. So this past weekend, we actually uh, had two events. We were at the Women's Better Living Expo down in Bridgeport at the Total Mortgage Arena, um, both Saturday and Sunday. Additionally, Nancy was at the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer um, walk at the Hartford Yard Goat Stadium on Sunday. Stephanie will be representing us at the Safe Futures 4K walk, um, which is an organization that supports uh, victims of domestic violence. That's over here in the New London County area in Waterford this coming weekend. We'll also be at the WBDC Gala in Greenwich on the 28th of the month. We will be at a uh, Connoisseur Media Family Halloween event, which we participated in last year, um, was a really great way for us to get our information into the hands of parents as the kids were coming to um, enjoy some Halloween activities. So we'll be back there. And then we'll be at the Connecticut Association of Healthcare at Home Conference on November 3rd. Uh, Nancy will represent us there. And Aaron will be speaking at the CBIA Employment Law Conference, and I will be there um, with a table to distribute our information to employers. And then uh, Nancy will also be at the Bristol Hospital Employee Open Enrollment Fair um, later on in the month of November. So 
we're busy, busy, we're out and about, we're trying to reach every corner of the state and uh, we continue to seek out events that would be a good fit um, and help us reach the audiences that we need to speak with. I also wanted to update you on our some of the targeted outreach we've been doing for possible employee overpayments. Um, we've been working with the finance department to send out targeted emails um, for industries where there are likely to be high earners who possibly would have over contributed um, beyond that social security uh, cap. So, so far we've targeted some healthcare employers and some IT employers. Um, I highlighted down at the bottom, we've had really strong open rates on these emails, 41% uh, for healthcare, almost 47% for IT, um, which is honestly pretty unheard of for an email campaign. So we know that at least these are grabbing people's attention, we're making them aware and asking them to pass this information on to their HR departments and employees so that they can check and see if they are in fact owed um, any sort of a refund to contact us. And then next week we'll be sending one out to a group that encompasses accountants, um, finance sector employees, and uh, realtors. So we'll continue to work on that. And then lastly, just wanted to update you on a newer partnership that we have. In September, we started working with Univision um, for Hispanic Heritage Month, and we've decided to extend that campaign uh, through the rest of Q4. Um, so we have a, a commercial that is um, in Spanish, of course. We also have been doing some sponsored social media posts with them to reach their audience of uh, social media followers. Um, and this is in addition to what we've been doing with Telemundo. So we are continuing to really uh, make strides reaching out to the Spanish speaking audience as we know that they are such an important group. Um, so those are my updates for today. I would be happy to answer any questions anyone has. Uh, Ava? Can we see the Spanish commercial? You can, yes. If you'll give me a second to pull it up, um, maybe we wanna have Jacqueline and Nancy give their updates. And then once I have it up, so I don't have to make you wait while I <laughs> get it queued up. And um, before we do that, I have one more question on this topic that I would love to see the Spanish add to. Um, so you mentioned that we're, uh, also I should say, the testimonials are amazing. Everything you're doing is amazing and so thoughtful. Um, the um, You mentioned that you're moving into doing um, TikTok content. And I was curious if you're planning to cross post that to Instagram Reels. Oh, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, I will, I will definitely discuss that with our, Miranda Creative is our marketing partner mm -hmm. that handles our paid social media campaigns. Um, I know that they are already cross posting it to Facebook stories because I actually was served one yesterday on my own personal <laughs> page. So because meta encompasses both Facebook and Instagram, I'm fairly certain that we are also cross posting to Instagram reels, but I will confirm that. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Cause I think, um, Instagram reels skew a little older than TikTok. Like TikTok is yes. more folks in their twenties, whereas reels tends to be like thirties and forties and skews, I will say from personal experience, um, Instagram Reels skews heavily mom content, which means it may be like especially well targeted. And if you're already doing the hard part of making the content, it seems like it's an easy lift. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. Um, and do we want to uh, turn it over to, I think Nancy's next in the queue while you're queuing up the Spanish video? So I actually, I, I found, I pulled up the video so I can play it Go now if you'd like. Okay, Great. let me share again. And we can see your screen, Jess. Ahora, la mayoría de los trabajadores en Connecticut son elegibles para hasta 12 semanas de reemplazo de ingresos para ausentarse del trabajo y cuidarse a sí mismo o a un familiar gravemente enfermo o por ciertas otras razones, como vincularse con un nuevo hijo, cuidar de un familiar militar lesionado, ser donante de médula ósea o de órganos o abordar problemas de violencia familiar. Los beneficios ya están disponibles. Obtenga más información o inicie su solicitud en ctpaidleaf.org. That's what we have running currently, and we have um, one of the folks that we are that we've identified and that we're working with to produce a testimonial commercial is bilingual. So hopefully we will have something akin to the testimonial I shared with you that we can rotate in um, on the Spanish stations as well. Hopefully within the next month or so. That's awesome. Thank you for um, playing that, and thank you Ava for um, flagging that. 
Um, so with that, anything else for Jessica before we move on to Nancy? Okay, hearing none, I'll turn it over to Nancy. Hello, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the sunshine. Um, as far as podcasts go, we have 1,073 downloads. So I know I'm very happy we made it over 1,000. So um, now we're looking at 2,000. Um, we, uh, I up to, uploaded the 17th episode on Monday, and that was with um, Sister Nyango who is a domestic abuse survivor and now helps empower other women dealing with the trauma in their life. She's really powerful and she's amazing. And it, yeah, I'm very glad that that's up and running. And um, Monday, I am recording a uh, breast cancer um, podcast with Dr. Catrice McWhite, who is a breast surgeon from Middlesex Hospital and um, a breast nurse navigator, Louise McWhite. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, this week, I recorded a podcast on the racial disparity in organ transplantation. And um, that one was mighty powerful with a friend of mine who had a heart transplant. And um, so it was a great one. So I'm working on some other ones um, right now on hospice and lung cancer. So those are in the works of getting recorded. Um, but some of the cities, I just want to let you know of other places that are listening to the podcast, which I find really fascinating. Um, there's a lot. So it's Virginia, Illinois, Colorado, Brooklyn and the Bronx and New York, New York. Uh, Chicago, Philly, Atlanta, Toronto and Quebec, Iowa, North Carolina, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Texas, Rhode Island, California, Florida, Maine, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Michigan. So we are getting to a lot of states, which is really, really encouraging, and Canada, our neighbors up north. So, um, and also Germany is really big on the podcast listening. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's someone in Germany who really likes listening to the podcast. So um, I'm excited and I just really hope the message spreads. And that's really what we're trying to do is just get really good content that shows what Connecticut Paid Leave can do. If you have any questions, and Molly, I'm going to get you on one. Uh, thanks, Nancy. That's wonderful. And I'm so glad to hear where you're past the thousand mark and heading towards I know. I see Jessica. I know. I just wanted to also um, just call out that one of the podcast in and of itself is amazing, but one of the really wonderful things that's come out of it are the connections that Nancy has made that have allowed us to um, coordinate efforts with different groups and, and use them as vehicles to outreach to their um, audiences and constituents. And I don't think she gives herself enough credit for that. She's really gotten us, um, it, you know, a lot of new connections and helped us spread the word in that way too. So. I just wanted to publicly say thank you to Nancy for, oh. for that because it's another really great part of what the podcast is doing. You're the best, Jess. Well, thank you again to the whole amazing team working together in perfect sync. Uh, any other questions for Nancy before we move on to Jacqueline? Okay, hearing none, I'll turn it over to Jacqueline. Thank you, Molly, and good morning, everybody. I don't have much. Um, we are starting to get our legislative, um, I don't want to say agenda, but our legislative program uh, together for next cycle. It's, uh, you know, January is strangely close, um, but we are working on just uh, seeing what the issues were and just having conversations at the moment. So I think when we have stuff a little bit more solid, uh, We'll, you know, talk a little bit more about that. Um, I think last Thursday, Jess and I were not able to attend because we had to go to the Northwest Hills COG meeting um, that unfortunately was rescheduled. Um, and then it was rescheduled to now, which obviously we couldn't make again. So we are working to um, move that to uh, November. So uh, we're talking to them. We were excited because it's a region that we have to, um, you know, get more into in terms of the state. So hopefully um, that'll work out for the future. And we've been doing a lot of work on um, the caregiver awareness um, uh, uh, program that we're doing for next month. November is 
Family Caregiver Awareness Month nationally. Um, and so we are asking people to recognize the caregivers in their lives, whether it be actually for them or just somebody that they know. Um, so any help you can do to help spread that word, uh, that would be hugely uh, appreciated. We're really excited about it. We will be sending a little just care package uh, to the caregiver and also just using it as a way to elevate what caregivers do and how just an easy day-to-day -to, -day to assist them in their work and doing that. Um, so um, yeah, any help that can be given to on social media to help spread that word would be great. So that's all I have for, for now. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Thanks, Ms. Jacqueline. Any questions for Jacqueline? Thank you. Uh, with that, any old business anyone would like to raise? Hearing none, any new business anyone would like to raise? Then we're gonna have a very efficient meeting, which is always great. Um, so is there anything else anyone would like to raise before we move towards adjourning? Okay. Uh, is make there a motion, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ava, is there a second? I think Sheila said it, but she's muted. Just one sec, second it. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, all those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Uh, I believe the ayes have it, but uh, anyone opposed to the motion to adjourn? <laughs> Any abstentions from the motion to adjourn? Hearing that, I believe the ayes have it. Mr. Jordan, thank you so much to the whole team for all of your amazing work, as well as to the fantastic committee. And we'll look forward to seeing everyone in a couple weeks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.